Frank and Harry Gakey were working on an estimate in the estimating room, and I got introduced to them, and Frank said something like, hello, welcome aboard, and Harry looked at me and grunted. And I remember walking out of the room thinking those were complete opposite reactions to <clears throat> a new hire, so uh, I pretty much knew that I, if I, I wanted to go in the direction of being around Frank versus Harry. Frank was the company's first co-op in 1973, setting the stage for the robust co-op program we have in place today. In the 46 years since then, Frank easily has become the heart and soul of Shook. He has led the company through its highs and lows, not only as CEO, but also as a dedicated Shook employee. The legacy he's built will not be forgotten. My first memory would probably be Bidding a job way back when, being in the bid room with the whole group of people, Frank could get pretty animated during the course of the bid, so it was always kind of interesting to watch him on bid day. He was going to the University of Cincinnati as, as a student, and in a, a construction program that had a, a co-op piece to it. That was back probably in the early 70s. I uh, helped him understand uh, estimating uh, principles and uh, fundamentals in, in uh, some of the shook ways of uh, doing uh, uh, takeoffs. Frank took to estimating early on, likely because it allowed him to use the analytical side of his brain. But he proved to be more than an exceptional estimator. I mean, at the beginning, he taught me how to estimate earthwork by taking the cross sections, the old quadrule paper and scale and pencil method. He wore many hats throughout the years, excelling as engineer, project manager, equipment yard manager, and more. Frank experienced many of the aspects that make this company so great, including the projects that helped shape our history. He's been invaluable, I think. He's, uh, he's probably been one of our better project managers. And I remember in 1976, he was the project engineer on the Middletown Hospital. We had 90,000 yards of dirt to truck away from that site. It took 12 months, and he kept track of all of that, the cost, the billings, and uh, I think that's where he learned uh, about cost. I worked with Frank on a project in Boardman, Ohio in 1985. And we had a new superintendent, and Frank and this guy didn't get along at all. His name was, was Chadwell, and we'd all have to leave the trailer so Frank and Chadwell could have their, their discussions about what Frank didn't like about what Jim was doing. And, and Jim wasn't, wasn't very uh, cooperative, and he didn't like taking orders. <laughs> the most memorable project I worked on with Frank Klein was the Miami University Stadium. We call it Jaeger Stadium now. And we went down to Miami University and found a wooded 26-acre site. And we had to turn it into a complete football stadium uh, surrounded by athletic fields in about 20 months. And Frank dissected that job, tore it apart. They had to build a cast in place concrete, I think, stands for this football stadium. And I believe they figured out how to change it from cast in place to precast concrete. And so I think they erected it out of, they had the concrete precast and they, it was pretty innovative at the time. It was a great job for him to mentor me on. I learned a lot from Frank. I learned a lot about construction on that job. And still to this day, when I drive to Oxford, Ohio, I have to take a spin by that stadium and I think about everything Frank and I experienced together. Most of his jobs were always very profitable. He stayed on top of them and he managed them well. While he had an impressive career, one might begin to wonder, what makes Frank, Frank? Frank is a, um, a very good woodworker. And I don't know how many people know that, but he, he's got a wood shop in the basement of his house. I remember he had to recruit, I don't know how many people to help him get some of his equipment down in the steps 
into their basement because he has some pretty good heavy equipment. But he's a really good woodworker. Frank's hair always looked like he had just gotten off of a motorcycle. It was a little fluffy on the outside and a little thin kind of on the top. I would say Frank's hair looks today like it did then. It looks like mine. <laughs> I don't think Frank's physical appearance has changed very much at all over the years. He didn't have a lot of hair back then and he doesn't today. I remember he came out to the tissue center job when I was building that and he was driving a Chrysler and it was a terrible vehicle. The maintenance was rotten and he got into my Toyota Avalon, and then the next week he was driving one. He is a car enthusiast, a sports car enthusiast. The first car I remember Frank driving was about a 1976 or 77 black Trans Am, Smokey and the Bandit variety Trans Am, had the big gold screaming eagle on the entire hood of this vehicle, and it was all tricked out. Frank loved that car. I have no idea what happened to it. I'll, I, I need to find that out, because that's another deep, dark secret of Frank J. Klein. I've always liked every one of his cars, except for he does have a Prius, and, and I really don't think he ought to have one of those. I was embarrassed that his wife would take him, and I, I told him to tell Lisa, don't let our CEO be seen in that thing. So he would send me the receipts of how, how cheap it was to buy the gasoline to put in that car because Frank's a little bit on the thrifty side. He is uh, a closet car junkie and uh, he is uh, a certified Porsche owner and he would cringe if anybody knew that because he, I think he's always fearful that somebody's going to look at the fancy car he has and then determine that he's one of those kind of people. Uh, he's super humble in that respect, and I can only hope as the years go on that he feels more comfortable driving a beautiful car into this parking lot. Frank became notorious for his nervous habits, especially one in particular. Well, he jingles the change in his pocket, obviously. That's his trademark. You can tell Frank is nervous or upset looking for information if he is jingling the change in his pocket and pacing back and forth and staring at you. And usually there's enough change in there so that when he starts rattling his change, you can hear it all the way across any floor in this office building. It's almost become amusing for the people that are aware that he does that, but he will. He'll just sit there and he'll jingle, and we call him Jingles. Speaking of the fun side of Frank, there are many special and funny memories Frank has shared with us over the years. I don't know if he still does, but he did have a passion for fireworks. In fact, so much that I think there's a story, and he'd have to tell you better than I could, but the police were involved <clears throat> down in Germantown one, I think it was a 4th of July, and uh, I don't think he's ever gotten over that incident, but um, so he liked fireworks, woodworking, and cars. We used to have uh, cookouts when we were over at the old office. I would bring in these marinated uh, chicken breasts that my wife marinated in, in bourbon. And I told Frank, you know, these are really good. My wife marinated in bourbon, and he about had a fit. He said, well, we can't feed our employees something that's marinated in liquor. You know, I said, Frank, it kind of burns off. Well, he started eating them, and then the next thing you know, he's marinating his pork chops in bourbon. My wife and I have gone to dinner at Frank's house, and I'll tell you a little story. We were there having dinner one night, and his wife, Lisa, has a cat. So we're sitting there having dinner, and next thing we know, that cat's laying in the middle of the dining room table in their house. And uh, I've never seen them so nervous or appalled or whatever because they, they swore that cat had never done that before and I called BS on that. I said that cat probably does that every day. The best piece of advice that Frank has ever given to me is that we cannot surprise people when we promote them. Clarence and I called him down to the big conference room and he was scared to death. He walked in that room I think he thought he was going to get fired and Clarence and I said well Frank go. Uh, we're here to tell you that we're going we're gonna to nominate you as president. So he was very, very surprised, and, and 
I'm, I think he, that's probably the closest he ever came to having a heart attack. Frank dedicated his entire career to Shook Construction, but it was more than simply a company to him. It was his Shook family. As the patriarch of any family, he devoted himself to its well-being and ensured that all his family members were well cared for. He's been invaluable to the company. He may not have been a five-tool player in softball, but he was a five-tool businessman. He's that guy I lean on, and uh, I know that he bleeds shook red, and he's super loyal, uh, probably loyal to a fault, but he's, uh, he's a brother. Uh, he's that comrade in arms, and uh, I can't imagine doing what I've done in my career without him. He's the force, he's the leader that led us through the Great Recession. Um, real challenging times for you know everybody, not just this company, but he, he kept, um, kept the ship afloat and kept us on the right track. He's always that guy who you can go to when you're in a jam. He is phenomenal in a crisis. He's in phenomenal when all the chips are down and you're pulling your hair out and you don't know what to do next. He's rock solid and steady. He dissects the problem. He'll, he'll just tell you, this is the way I see it, and you know, I may not understand everything, so if I'm wrong, let me know, but this is my understanding, and you know, this is what I think you need to do. And, and he's really good about problem solving. He is a great problem solver. Frank has established himself a force to be reckoned with. His hard work has not gone unnoticed. We have all been amazed and impressed by what he has done for our company. Here are a few words used by some of his closest colleagues to describe him. I would say he's just a steady Eddie. Detailed, honest, trustworthy. He is very frugal. Very loyal. German. He's a very dependable guy. Passionate about show construction. Frank has learned a great deal in 46 years. Along his journey, he did not shy away from passing along his wisdom to other members of the Shook family. I would say probably the biggest lesson is um, trust in yourself and trust the people around you is what he's, he's given to me. So Frank always told me something his dad told him, and that was if you don't tell a lie, you don't have to remember your story. And Frank has always been straight up honest and um, that's a great lesson for me as well as anybody. As a leader, you need to have the courage to ask the tough questions, um, even if you don't know the answer, and you need to be vulnerable enough to show that you don't know the answer, but value the opinions of the people that you ask and trust them to help you get to the right answer. It's been a powerful lesson. To have a plan, to not be afraid to challenge and revise the plan, you know, and try to always constantly improve that plan. He led by example. If you listen to what he said, uh, you could learn a lot from Frank. He knows gross margins. You cannot hide a dollar on a gross margin that he cannot find. We went through a renovation at our Northcott office and upgraded the restrooms when Vince was the CEO. And I think maybe for the first time in the company's history, hand dryers, air dryers were installed. And Frank took issue with this and did a fairly detailed analysis of the cost of utilizing a hand dryer versus the cost of utilizing paper towels, primarily in the uh, amount of time the employee spent drying their hand and multiply that out by the cost of an employee and their amount of downtime and very proudly went to Vince and laid an analysis on his desk showing that he was costing the company uh, serious sums of money by installing these hand dryers. Frank has contributed plenty to Shook and continues to give every day. From bringing the multiple Shook divisions under one company to creating the market channels that exist today, we have a great deal to thank him for. I think the structure of the company is his legacy. I mean, he really was the the guy that developed and implemented the market channel strategy. He kind of brought Shook back to one company. I mean, we were very fractured. You know, we had Building Group, Environmental Group, ABS, Americon, and, 
You know, I think Frank tried to get that all back into one umbrella. Frank forever will hold a special place in our hearts. We wish him an abundance of joy and happiness as he continues his journey with Shook Construction and beyond. But before we conclude, let us talk about what his reaction to this tribute might be. He'll have a shit hemorrhage is what he usually says. And then uh, I think he'll be good with it after that. He's gonna be pissed off. <laughs> Once he realizes there's a video made about him and all this done was behind his back, he's probably gonna be pretty upset. I don't know how far that upset goes and if the change in the pocket will be jingling, but um, I also think he'll be humble and honored. One, probably be a little bit torqued that we were doing something without him knowing. Um, very quickly that'll go to the side and then he's gonna start trying to figure out what it cost. And he's gonna start calculating the cost of this effort to determine if it was a good use of the company's funds. And uh, Frank, you can rest assured it's a good use of the company's funds. So just take a deep breath and hopefully you enjoy it. Mm -hmm.